once in your life stand in front of us and show yourself. Is this airfield haunted or just a flight of fantasy? Oh, shit, I can't get out. and this week I brought Most Haunted to Sunderland and the very haunted Northeast Aircraft Museum. The names de Havilland, Westland and Avro Anderson are all synonymous with 20th century flight and along with the ever imposing Vulcan bomber, all can be found at what was once Sunderland's airport. That role fell by the wayside in 1984 as developers soon swallowed up neighbouring land. But we're here in the hopes of encountering the military personnel that were based here during two world wars. But enemy attacks didn't necessarily lead to every loss of life. So is this airfield haunted by the victim's training disasters or even the spy who once infiltrated this RAF base? Now, if this place is as scary as believed, then you probably think it quite strange that two people would want to spend the night alone and in the dark. Well, that's exactly what Kath and I did last night. How scared of you are you on a scale of one to ten? <gasps> Twelve. Do you feel to the right of us? Oh, wow. Is anybody here? It's like, it's like we're bloody surrounded. Oh God, this is bloody awful. And not surprisingly, it wasn't long before Kath and I had made a hasty exit. All of which bodes well for the rest of the crew as we embark on a full day's investigation of this interesting and historic location. Stones are thrown by unseen phantoms here in Hangar 1. And a German spy who stole an aeroplane from this very site is said to roam here along with the ghost of an Alsatian dog. As well as being seen, the ghost of an air sea rescue helicopter pilot apparently doesn't like visitors anywhere near his aircraft and he's been known to actually push people out of the way. Wartime music and chatter are thought to come from a place that used to be the pilot's rest area. Poltergeist activity and dark shadows are said to plague every single hangar on this entire site. It actually goes back to 1917, the First World War. Its main claim to fame was on August the 15th, 1940. The Battle of Britain was raging and every plane, every hurricane from this airfield was in the sky and they shot down a lot of Heinkels, 
and Messerschmitt 110s around the coast. There's one incredible story of Sergeant Edward Grenville Shaw. He crashed not far from here and he was training. They were actually um, flying at each other in hurricanes, but unfortunately one of them made a mistake. They clipped wings. Sergeant Shaw crashed into the ground. The figure of a man has been seen standing at the top of the stairs here in the display hall. Could it be the ghost of a young sergeant who's often been seen wandering endlessly around this part of the hangar, searching for his wreckage? He's often been heard asking for his boots, which were left in the ground after his body was found. A few years ago, they dug down and found the plane, the engine, all sorts of other rather personal items as well, which are still here, still on show. This is a location where modern day manufacturing stands side by side with three hangars crammed full of memories. It's a scenario that instantly interests Steve Parsons, with the paranormal investigator already intent on getting the most from this museum. What do you think makes this particular location different from the castles, the manor houses and the pubs that we normally investigate? We've got three big hangars that we need to cover. There's a lot of things going on here. In particular, it's the, it's the reports from the, the visitors. One in particular involving uh, a young child who was here, who sat and had a long conversation with a World War I airman. Some weeks later, a female visitor reported a conversation with the identical man. She didn't know anything about the previous sighting. So when you hear stories like that, how does that make you feel? I, I don't think that there can be an easy, simple explanation. And I think possibly the simplest explanation in that case is it may well be some form of paranormal activity. By day we can see it for what it is, but we're going to be faced with strange noises and strange shapes, uh, shadows, angles, it's going to look like a very alien landscape that we're going to be in. And very frightening. Very frightening. Past experience tells us that aircraft hangars aren't the best places to spend the night. But would Sunderland's Aircraft Museum prove any less hostile? Or are those who perished on the ground and in the air ready to vent their rage on our unsuspecting team? The symbol they're putting in my head is the swastika. I would put money on him being a spy. He's saying it wasn't my fault. In its former guise as Sunderland Airport, today's location may once have been flooded with thousands of friendly flyers. But we're here to see who allegedly stalks the haunted hangars of the North East Aircraft Museum. Each of the site's three hangars contain exhibits that have their own tale to tell. And with medium David Wells and guest psychic Ian Shillito more than willing to listen, we could begin to explore this mass of flying machines. When I come in here, the very first thing I'm aware of is male, a male figure. He's kind of He's kind of like, you know, if he was, if he was here, for example, he would, he would he'd probably stand here and then look out. Right. And hide. So he's, he's, he's hiding Do himself. Do you see him? Can you describe what he looks like? What era is he from? He's, he's World War II, and he is... The symbol they're putting in my head is the swastika. They're putting in a German symbol. Oh. And very much a... Almost like a... You know those old scratchy German tunes you used to hear from World yeah. War II? That's audible for me so they're telling me that he was connected in some way to the other side so he's not and that's possibly why he's hiding 
now it's getting clearer. It's like a brownie uniform, or maybe maybe it's like a what do you call them boiler suits. Not mm -hmm. I'm very familiar with them, but yeah, like a boiler suit. He's flitting between that with, but I can see the wings of the RAF. It, it's very odd. So he's flitting between that and almost um, this Germanic look, almost with the armband. With it, do you know what I mean? He's flitting between the two. Any name with him? Not not at the moment. I, I, I get the word, and it's, it's screeched at me, not by him, but by whoever's helping me here. Um, and the word that's been screeched at me is thief. And he's, um, it's very odd. I'd like to go over, because he's, he's really mainly over here, okay. behind the tail of this aircraft. But it's almost like he, you know, the hiding effect was from here. So he would, he would come from here and, and look round. Mm -hmm. that, that's essentially what, when I first saw him, I would put money on him being a spy. I would, I would put money on him gathering information by blending in. It's almost like he, uh, it's not a double agent because I don't think he was working for them as well. I think he was solely working for um, the German side. Okay. Where's, Tre is it Tresben, Tresben he came from? Is that Czechoslovakia, I think? No idea. You said he was spying. Is he in effect spying on us now? It sounds quite possible that that's what he's doing. A name with him yet? It sounds like a pope. It's like August or Augustine or something like that. It's like a pope's name. What, what I'm, I'm actually getting him being hung, so his, his neck is oh. cocked to one side, and I can see the burn around his neck. I mean, intellectually, that would say to me he was caught. And I'm, How old is he showing himself? It, he's presenting as about maybe late 20s, early 30s. And I know it's easy to go for the 1940s because mm. <laughs> that's when the war was. Uh, but they show me. 1947, when he died. Is he the only one in this particular space the, at the no, moment? No, there's not. There's, there's, there's someone over by that helicopter as well. This one here? Yeah, there's, there's someone defending this helicopter for some reason. I don't know. It's almost like they're, they're kind of like, if you were coming towards me, it's like, you no, know, like British Bulldog. They'd be like oh, really? in front of you because they, they don't want you near it. They don't want you to touch the helicopter, which I'm clearly doing. Um, Who is that then? Who's doing that? He's very. Um, it's almost like he, in his mind, it's in a constant state of readiness. Mm. Like it's constantly there to rescue. Do we have a, an idea of his connection to the aircraft, with a rank or a, a role within the aeroplane? He seems senior to me, so I would think he would be a pilot. Right. Probably like a lieutenant or a lieutenant commander, because obviously they... But know. why is he so protective of it? It is like he's, he's never left it. He sticks to it. And I doubt if he... Like the other one, I think, moves around. Mm -hmm. I think this one doesn't leave its side. Any name with him? Or? A Do description you, of what he looks like? He's quite, I wouldn't say he's fat, but he's certainly, he's well built, you know, mm -hmm. he's not thin. There is a name associated with him which is Bartholomew, and a Bartholomew, and I don't know if that's a surname or a Christian name. Okay. So it's either or. Date when he died or around the period that he died? It seems quite, quite recent really. I wouldn't think this one's too old. Um, and did he die with this? No, or? he doesn't. It doesn't feel as if, it doesn't feel to me as if he died with the helicopter. It feels as if he died. You know, he probably even just died of a stroke or a heart attack. You know, but just felt so connected. So to So just the natural causes, and he's just come back here to yeah, where the helicopter yeah. is. The, the word they're giving me is glory. So I guess whatever this helicopter has done in its past, right. it sticks out in his mind as being one of the biggest rescues he's Aww. ever done. So I kind of hope that. Um, you know, he Can you ask come him back. to do something around here? I can do, yeah, I can ask him. OK. If there's any astros present near this, this helicopter, could you please show us you're here? Please show us, make a sound. Mm. <gasps> Did you hear it? I heard something. Did you yeah. not hear oh, that? No, didn't, no. It was like a tap, wasn't it? was it? two very faint taps that seemed to come On from it. in there. Did you hear it, John? Right. Come and ask, ask again. If that was you, could you please do it again? There is a lot of background noise yeah, at the moment, isn't there? I really did hear a I real faint... It. You heard it as well, a real faint bump, bump in the helicopter. That's Fantastic. really weird. So there's two spirits in here. We're talking about the spy and mm. the gentleman... Barth we'll call him Bartholomew mm. for now, associated with this. Shall we move on? Yep. Yeah. Amazingly, David had identified two of the figures that are thought to still roam Hangar One. 
One a hero of a Falklands war rescue, the other a figure who was shamefully shrouded in espionage and whose treacherous ways eventually saw him executed by the very people he'd once worked for. As we moved on further, I decided David should try psychometry to make use of the many mechanical exhibits that lay close at hand. Can you see what you pick up from this particular engine here? A child crying, a little girl crying is about five, maybe five years old. It's quite horrific. I can see the bottom of um, a woman's legs. Right? Okay. So it's quite horrible. And, and I think my right arm, my right, my right hand feels stuck to it. Like it won't come off. My right hand feels stuck to it. It won't come out. Meaning it what? It, somebody's hand got stuck in, in the yeah. engine? <gasps> but That's awful. What I'm saying is just my hand. Any, any idea you know, of the person that would have flown this particular plane? Can you pick, can you get that? Um, no, it's all, it's all like a burning mass of fire, you know? Okay. I think, um, I'm not even sure if they survive. They might, they might have even survived it. it they like might odd. have survived? Yeah. Okay. It does seem as if they survived, which seems a bit odd. Unbelievably, David had pinpointed one very notable event and one that has a living witness. This exact engine came from the plane that crashed onto a family home several decades ago and killed a mother. That lady's daughter, then just a child, lost a hand in the accident and only recently visited this museum for a frightening recollection of that fateful day. And this privileged and personal information wasn't known to any of our crew beforehand. So would David be able to feel anything from a second engine nearby? Put your hands on this one. Um, this immediately said trainee to me. OK. Um, he died in training, so he never got to fight. I don't see any, any gallantry, I don't see feel. And I think that may have been a problem for him. So he's saying it wasn't my fault, so he's not to blame. Aww. It's actually really quite disturbing, to be honest. It's quite sad. There's, there's images of him being dragged out of, that's a lie actually, bits of him being dragged out of the mud, that, that's, you know, so the whole thing went up, the whole thing exploded. It's just very sad, very sad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a bear bit. You are, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, I'll get it together once I just get him to step back a bit. Um, Edward. Okay. Um, did you get a date when he uh, died, when this happened? 40s again, but about um, the spring of 42 is what okay. he said, spring of 42. Right. Um, a surname with him? Shaw. 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 Yeah. S-H-A-W. S-H-A-W, as okay. in George Bernard, he said. Yeah. OK. Is he grounded here? Very much so. That there, there are things here, apart from this, that belong to him. The, the natural thing, because I can feel his possessions around, the natural thing would be that he wants something returned to him. Something... What was that? It's like someone moving about, wasn't well, it? Well, it was right almost there. like something just behind you. So something, what, buried with him? Taken to be buried with him? Well, the only thing I can see is a pair of boots. All I can see is a pair of boots. Is that what he wants returned to him? The, the, you know there's an expression, he died with his boots on, meaning he died in action, he died nobly. Um, he's actually using that expression, but he said he died with his boots off. So that's what he's saying. He's standing on top of that landing, just... Is he? He's standing there, yeah. Is he still there? Yeah, he's walking up the stairs. Edward, as you're walking up the stairs, can you just, just really bang loudly with your feet so we can hear you? You can hear it? Yeah. He's just doing that, yeah. To, to me? To go up the stairs? The reason why David was being pulled into this otherwise empty office was about to become very clear. Following his crash in March 1942, a few precious personal items were found with the scattered remains of Sergeant Edward Shaw. And just for today, museum staff had laid these items out in this room. Not only did David not know this, but he would also soon sense something very specific about this young man's death. It's got 
all his address in here, the telephone numbers. God. It was really busy in January, wasn't it, Edward? Yeah. Door, nine o'clock file, flying, dusk lecture. Is that right? All Look sorts at of... April. April? Mm -hmm. Is that what he's just said to you? Mm -hmm. April. OK. There's nothing in here at the beginning. I think that's what he's saying, nothing in April. Ah! So nothing in May, June, July, August, September, October. Notes nothing. for notes. There's nothing. No, you're right. If you look through there, there's actually nothing in here. Well, we'll definitely come back later, yeah? Mm. Yeah? Following on from this poignant pause, we first welcome Nightfall and then guest medium Ian Shilato, whose overall summary of this former airbase appeared to relate to what we had already heard. You're going to get lots of audibles. You're going to get lots of visuals. I mean, that's without a doubt. Basically, we've got two, male, two active male spirits here. Mm -hmm. um, one slightly more aggressive than the other one, mm -hmm. but relatively harmless. OK. I think, to be honest with you, that's, that's the area okay. covered. That's it, covered. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what I... we'll do is we'll switch all the lines <laughs> off and turn to night vision and see exactly what we get. With David and now Ian sensing two men of mixed emotions, we were all left to ask if these actions are cries for help or a daunting premonition of the dangers that still lie ahead. Most Haunted are at the Northeast Aircraft Museum, a place of visual treats for anyone with an interest in aviation or military history in general. However, this isn't just a resting place for warplanes and helicopters. It could also be home to those who lost their lives and refuse to disappear. That was... <laughs> Something just touched the top of my head. <laughs> And what better way to test our resolve than to visit the notorious Hangar 1, said to house at least two male entities, one an overly protective helicopter pilot, the other a World War II spy who may not like our presence here. So just how unwelcome would guest medium Ian Shilato, Steve Parsons, John Gilbert or I be made to feel? It's a scary place. What the <laughs> What the <laughs> what's that? That was above me. <laughs> <laughs> now we've not heard any, we've been no. here quite a bit today, that isn't, an, as far as I can see, that isn't a natural sound from this environment. That was... Oh, oh my... Okay. Is there anybody in here? That, it was like a shower. Yeah, it was like a load of pebbles coming Come down on, from then. the ceiling. I'm absolutely scared to death. My knees. I'm completely shaking. <laughs> I'm so scared. If there's a gentleman here connected to the the Sea King rescue helicopter. Shall I lean against it? Yeah. That should be an anorak, it's actually a whirlwind. Is it? It's yeah. not a Sea King. Oh right. Please, is there somebody here that wishes to talk to us? Can you make a noise? Whoa, 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 that came down here. It's from up there, it's falling up from the ceiling. I heard it fall. Again, it's not warm, so it's not showing on the images. What have you got? It's a pebble came down here. 
I don't like it at all. I don't like it one bit. Do you want to get in it? Yeah. If mm. this guy is protective of his helicopter, he ain't gonna. Annoy him, isn't it? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I'm just feeling very on edge at the moment. You're feeling on edge? Yeah. That's not good. It's not great. I'm just going to try and work with it and just feel very short of breath. <sighs> Was that you? Was that you, Steve? No. Just looking at the thermal. What? I just heard a voice. What? Was it? It wasn't a word. It was like, mm hmm Really? Mm. We got it? Mm. Well, yes, it's never changed. OK, I'm it wasn't me. 15, OK. <sighs> was that you? How on earth is one meant to get out of here if this crashes? I'm very on edge. You saying that is making me... No, I know, sorry. It's not good, is it, psychology? It's just making me feel very... I've just got complete and utter panic inside of me. I wasn't feeling it outside. Now I'm feeling it. Uh, when we were out, out there, it felt quite comfortable, oh, but now... Oh, sorry. Something was he was here, like movement right here. I thought Steve oh, was right next sorry. to you. Can you just get... Sorry, Steve, please. Just, right. can you... Oh, oh, I've got to come oh. in because I'm not standing out here on my own. Got you, got you. OK. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's me! Oh, I know, I know, I know. Oh, oh exit. Oh. OK. Something... I was sure he was right next to you, Steve. Was something was between me... I've heard a shuffling about Yeah, the something was between me and the wall of the helicopter. <gasps> something just touched the top of my head. No, I think there's stuff on here. No, it wasn't... No, it wasn't. wasn't. It was right on the top of my head. It was right on the top of my head. Oh, it's really dangerous in here. It's we... not good, is it? Whoever it is seems to like me. If you're here with us, perhaps you could do something to the helicopter. Maybe you could... I don't know. It's been known to shake in the past, or... Perhaps you could make a noise on the outside of the helicopter for us to let us know that you're in. You're here with us now. You're in our space. What was that? What? A bang. I didn't hear it. Did you hear it? No. No. Was that you trying to talk to us, trying to make contact? Was it you that was throwing things before? I did just hear a bang. Did you? But I was I was moving about and I think you moved at the same I time. I moved so. my hand on the can't be sure. Oh, could have been you as well. Yeah. Please could you bang? Knock. I don't know whether it's the birds again or, or distant shuffly footsteps. But from the front end of the helicopter. It's definitely moving. I can feel it. Mm. Please, come on. We're actually in your helicopter. This is your pride and joy. Surely, is it worth defending? Are we violating it? If you don't want us here, if you don't want us touching your helicopter, I'm banging on the helicopter. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. You could have bloody warned us. Sorry. Defend it. Let us know whether you want us near it or not. God, it freaked me out that before. Steve? I just got... I just got pushed. Did you? Well, I didn't stumble, that's for certain, because I'm standing still. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm standing on, on a flat concrete floor, and I hit the helicopter. With even a self-confessed sceptic feeling that he may have been pushed when no one was anywhere near him, we'd soon be experiencing yet more bumps and bangs next door in Hangar 2. In fact, so unexpected was this auditory phenomena that John Gilbert's sound kit was the only thing that was switched on at the time. Oh! oh I'm not happy with this at all. It's right by... I'm, I'm really not. It's moving this plane, isn't it? Is it just our oh. weight, do you think? Have we just got fingers on the plane? Like a table, then. Oh, Holy shit! Well, oh, that was head. that landed on my foot. But the real reason that we were all gathered in Hangar 2 was to test the plausibility of this former Navy plane, which is said to shudder all on its own.
I've got movement at the front. I've got movement at the back end. I can't yeah, I just feel that. Can you, are you picking up these bangs? Oh, yeah. It's actually moving quite violently at the back. That tapping's outrageous. That's it's outrageous. It's almost like Morse code. It's unbelievable. Oh! <gasps> Did you feel that? Yeah. The whole plane moved. No, it was a real. Do it again. Oh! You're right, David. No, I'm all right. Oh, that's that, that was next to you, I know, that, I know, I know. You're all right. Yeah, I'm fine, fine, I'm fine. Did you hear that? Mm. It was like a laugh. That is from the middle of the plane. The, the tapping is definitely coming from the airframe. I've got my ear to the fuselage and hear it from inside the plane. It's shaking. The plane's shaking. Oh. It is shaking, yeah. Well, I guess I can feel oh it in this way. I Do you mean there's any harm? Do you mean there's any harm? Oh. How the hell did it do that? It was so shifted, didn't it? It, it actually, the, the, the nose lifted off the ground. That would have taken a considerable amount, considerable amount of weight to do. I've never heard tapping like that before. Always knew that these hollow corrugated shells may hold more than aircraft alone, but had this latest bombardment of objects further proved that prying noses are far from welcome at the Northeast Aircraft Museum. You spy on our countrymen, our, our brave men. <laughs> East Aircraft Museum houses so many memories, with three entities appearing particularly prominent to staff and visitors alike. One is the proud but possessive helicopter rescue pilot that may possibly have just pushed Steve Parsons in Hangar 1, whilst the other two are contrasting World War II pilots. The first of these is a foreign spy who infiltrated this RAF base in the early 40s, and the other a training pilot who tragically crashed nearby. So could medium David Wells supply John Gilbert or I with any other sensitive information by using psychometry on Edward Shaw's personal artefacts, particularly the socks that his mother had given him just before he died? I guess he was, um... I mean, it's obvious to say that when he hit the ground he was... you know, blown apart. Or at least dismembered. Did you just tap your foot on the floor, David? No. That's what? Why I never Does a tap it. under the foot? Oh. Oh, one again. That's a cough. I'm just going to say what I'm, I'm saying and getting because mm -hmm. it's bo bothered me for the last been bothering me since I met him. Like, I think his feet are missing. Mm -hmm. I think the you know his feet are missing. That's what he was found. What is it? It's his it's his armband. It's his three socks. Oh, oh God, oh, love God. it. God. Are you physically feeling anything on you, David? He's touching me, he's yeah. touching me. Really? Feels like a pair of socks. Like... Ooh. It oh, feels like is. blood on it. Oh, bless him. It just seems, you know, it seems like he's saying, lesson for us all, really, that of all the things and all the objects in the world, a pair of socks, you know, a pair of socks meant more to me than anything. 
this all came as a touching reminder that not every loss of life came in direct combat, and that that sort of torment can linger a lot longer than any living soul can possibly imagine. But there was still time for David, Carl, Kath, Stuart, John and me to head back to an area where we'd almost got used to being pelted with stones. But was the perpetrator a helicopter pilot or a spy? If there's any spirit person here, do you spy on our countrymen, our, our brave men? Did you steal a plane? Were you hanged, Augustine? If it's not you that's in here, then if there's any other spirit person in here, please make yourself known to us. Oh! Oh, that hit me. Shit, are you all right? It's they got hit jumped. me. You're right. Yeah, it certainly hit me as well. It hit my shoulder. There you go. Where? Else. Yeah, but it was co it was coy. No, it, it sounded was metally. Like... It did metally. Sound... It sounded oh, no. like three or four. Well, like, like raining down. Yeah, it did. Definitely. What's that over there? Not... <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time that. I've been hit by anything. Were you first hit? Time I've... Yeah, it hit my shoulder. It hit me on the shoulder. It wasn't heavy or anything, but. Who is it? Who's doing this? Come on. Oh, that one. Did you hear that? That was a footstep. That was a footstep over there. Who is it? Who's doing this? Come on. That one. Oh, did you hear that? That was a footstep. That was a footstep over there. Come on, if you're there, show yourself. For once in your life, stand in front of us and show yourself. He's a coward. He is a coward. Oh my god, did you hear that? What, what footstep? Yeah, yeah I there. did. Yeah, 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 like a. Just, foot. yeah, just over there somewhere. Mm. Oh, oh my god! Jesus sage. Holy crap. That's not normal, that's not right. Is it? Is it Dave? Is it Dave? That's like, like a chain swinging or something, isn't it? Do you want to go and sit in the helicopter? Yeah, let's. Come on. <clears throat> round here, round the back here is where I got um, touched. And Steve got pushed. Yeah, Steve got pushed. Yeah, Steve got pushed. yeah, yeah he, he told did. me he got pushed. Yeah. But something touched the top of my head and something actually brushed past me and I heard the, my fabric on my coat go like that as it went past me. You all right, Kat? No, I just heard stones. My gun it dropped? Yeah. Lion, that bounced off this, didn't it? That was big. It was right next to me. That was big. Come on, <laughs> show yourselves. Oh, hell fire. We didn't. What did we got? What did we get in the plane? Oh, show us. Show some of us get in the plane. Some of us get out the plane. Stay no. out the plane. There's not enough room for us all in there. Oh, okay. You'll be safer in there than out here, by the sounds of it. I won't count on that. Where's your gun? No, it's a good one. He's gone into it. Oh! You alright, Carl? I'm in the aircraft now. These are all the, all the dials. Is anybody in here? Is there anybody in here with me? Anyone at all? I can't get out. I actually can't get out. It's just a dark situation to be in. I can't get out of this plane. I can see this aircraft. Come on, do something more impressive. 
and chuck and stones a bunch of girls. You all right, Carl? Yeah. It's kind of, kind of strange. It's you might be struggling to... getting in and out of that bloody cockpit because it's quite a tight squeeze, you see, so... Mm. Could be that. I feel like I'm alone in here. Could be psychosomatic, I could be... <laughs> Please just do something. Yeah, I'm losing the troubles here. If you don't want me touching your controls... Stop me. Use your power. If you'd manifested and you pushed people away from your beloved machine, do it again now. Carl? You all right? Yeah. It doesn't sound convincing, does it? Well, let's go round and under. Just go and see. Mm. Come on. <coughs> Watch your head, Kath. Watch out for this. Heels as well. Oh, that's on the other side. Just that. That was weird because we were all around that side. Every one of us. You alright, Carl? I get round. Oh, shit. Can't get out. What's up with him? Get out. Just trying to get out. Just trying to get out. Are you all right, mate? <laughs> you all right? Come on, come on. What's up, mate? Oh, f I was in there sitting, saying, playing with the control, saying, take my hand off of it, move, move my hand if you don't like me on the crow. And something went. Oh my god! Well, to my arm, and I, I, I didn't. I should have stayed now. I know, but. I couldn't, I couldn't get out because I'm, I'm that kind of hemmed in. Hemmed in. So, <sighs> oh shit, that was scary. You're right. It was, but it was, it was that, David. It, it was like it grabbed you. But it was oh like, my God. but, but not a just really? sort of get off. Did you hear the sound of the he helicopter being hit by a stone? I heard, I heard one bang. Yeah. Yeah, we were on the other side <sighs> to talk to you, and there was an almighty bang. With so many memories around us, it was almost impossible not to feel the nostalgia associated with these aircraft. This could almost be a working museum, yet a lot of the activity seems to catch you in the corner of the eye, or occasionally, totally unawares. The legend of these men that supposedly haunt this location have given the whole crew a night we will never forget. A night full of bumps and bangs, and a definite feeling that this former RAF base is alive with so many memories from its prolific past. One of the most challenging aspects for me personally at the Aircraft Museum was the sheer weight and number of objects that were being thrown at the crew. For example, during a vigil I did with Yvette, John Gilbert and Ian Shillito, as we stepped into the hangar, we were met with an absolute rain of small objects. What was that? What the? That was... I did notice earlier in the night a number of blackbirds roosting in the roof space of the hangar. But even I find it implausible to suggest that the birds alone could be responsible for all this material that was being thrown around. So we are left looking at other possibilities, potentially even paranormal possibilities. During one of the vigil sessions with Yvette, John Gilbert and Ian Chilito, they stepped inside a Royal Navy rescue helicopter. I remained outside with a camera to keep watch. During this session, I did feel distinctly like I'd been pushed. Steve? I just got... I just got pushed. Did you? Well, I didn't stumble, that's for certain, because I was standing still. The obvious explanation must be that I'd simply become disorientated in the dark and momentarily lost my balance. At the time, that didn't seem to be, for me personally, what happened. 
uh, uh, aviation and ghosts have a strong connection. Uh, old RAF airfields seem to have a strong paranormal link to them. We leave behind a museum that thrives on activity and that seven decades on still seems haunted by those who left here but were never to return alive. Sleep tight. <laughs>